Now in this presentation, we will see the proof of the theorem which we have seen in the previous lecture. This was the theorem given two clauses C1 and C2. A resolvent C of C1 and C2 is a logical consequence of C1 and C2. This was the theorem, right? We have two clauses C1 and C2. A resolvent C of C1 and C2 is a logical consequence of C1 and C2. We have to prove this. Consider two clauses C1 and C2. Okay, we'll consider these two clauses C1 and C2. And let's take C1 as L or C1 bar. And C2 is not L or C2 bar. Okay, we have these two literals L and not L. Okay, C1 has L and C2 has not L. And we have C1 bar and C2 bar which are actually representing the remaining literals. Fine. Now, what is the resolvent of C1 and C2? Resolvent of C1 and C2 will be C1 bar or C2 bar because L and not L will get cancelled. So, it is clear that C which is the resolvent is C1 bar or C2 bar. Isn't that so? Our target is to show that C is the logical consequence of C1 and C2. This particular C is the logical consequence of C1 and C2. We have to show this. If C is the logical consequence of C1 and C2, then it simply means if C1 and C2 are true, then C has to be true. This is what we have learned about logical consequence in the previous lectures. If C is the logical consequence of C1 and C2, then it simply means that if C1 and C2 are true, then C has to be true. Okay. Now assume that C1 and C2 are true. For L, there are two possibilities. Either L is true or false. Isn't that so? We have assumed that C1 and C2 are true. Okay. Now, for L, there are two possibilities. For this particular literal, we have two possibilities. Either L is true or either L is false. We will consider both the cases. Let's discuss case 1. Case 1 is when L is true. Okay. Now, let's take these two clauses, C1 and C2. You can see over here that we have L or C1 bar in C1. And we have not L or C2 bar in C2. And they both must be true. That's why I have written true, true over here. They both must be true, right? Our target is to prove that if C1 and C2 are true, then C has to be true. That's what we want to prove. For this purpose, we are considering case 1, that is when L is true. Let's see what happens when L is true. If L is true, then it doesn't matter what C1 bar is. This particular disjunction will always be true, right? What about this particular clause? Not L or C2 bar. Here not L is false, right? Then C2 bar has to be true in order to make this clause true. Our target is to make this true and this true and then we'll find out whether C is true or not. In order to make this true, C2 bar has to be true. This means that C equal to C1 bar or C2 bar is true because of C2 bar. Isn't that so? This is the resolvent C, right? And resolvent C is nothing but C1 bar or C2 bar. As C2 bar is true, therefore C1 bar or C2 bar has to be true. Because this is the disjunction. If any one of them is true, then the whole clause will be true. Let's discuss case 2. What happens when L is false? If L is false, then C1 bar has to be true, right? Because this clause needs to be true. Therefore, C1 bar is true. This means this resolvent C is true because of C1 bar. Isn't that so? So it is clear from this fact that C is the logical consequence of C1 and C2 because no matter what, when C1 and C2 are true, then C will be definitely true. Fine. Therefore, a resolvent C of C1 and C2 is a logical consequence of C1 and C2. Isn't that so? This is all what we need.